Hello and welcome friends. I'm Dr. Raj Srinabudrupad. I'm board certified in internal medicine, and today's video is all about Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is the third leading cause of death, and it's on the rise. It now affects 6.5 million Americans, and it's the most common cause of cognitive decline and dementia. We fear Alzheimer's as we fear no other disease, because it takes away your memories, your ability to think, your very identity and ability to have a meaningful life. It's a disease that terrorizes families as they see their loved ones slip away. It's a disease that causes heartbreak and desperation. Alzheimer's disease was first described by a German psychiatrist, Dr. Aloysius Alzheimer, in 1901. He took care of a 50-year-old woman who was admitted for paranoia, progressive sleep and memory disturbance, aggression and confusion until her death five years later. He then performed an autopsy and studied her brain, and under the microscope he found something interesting. This is what a normal neuron looks like under a microscope. But in August's brain, Dr. Alzheimer's found a lot of abnormal neurons. They were filled with neurofibrillary tangles made from a protein called tau. Then with a special stain, he found that her brain had numerous beta amyloid plaques. These are now considered the defining histological features of Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease often begins with memory loss, but as the disease progresses to the other parts of the brain, it can cause other symptoms like difficulty performing familiar tasks, problems with language, decreased judgment, and changes in the personality. We've all had a senior moment when we've forgotten words or a name at the tip of the tongue. When is this normal versus an early sign of dementia? Alzheimer's is sneaky. You can go for years ignoring minor slip-ups and senior moments before realizing it's actually Alzheimer's disease. Let's take a closer look at brain cells, which are called neurons. The dendrites are like antennas where the neuron receives signals from all of its neighbors. Electrical impulses then travel down the axon leading to the release of neurochemicals that will then signal the next neuron. The connection between neurons is called synapses. And in healthy people, all of our memories, thoughts, and feelings are the results of signals that pass through billions of neurons in our brain. Neurons signal each other through chemicals called neurotransmitters. In Alzheimer's disease, there are lower levels of an important neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. Unfortunately, medications that are prescribed for Alzheimer's disease have limited efficacy. Some of them work by increasing the amount of acetylcholine between neurons, but they only lessen symptoms for a limited time and they do not slow the progression of the disease. In Alzheimer's disease, the beta amyloid plaques are scattered around the neuron, making it difficult for the neuron to communicate with its neighbors. The tau tangles are inside the neuron, and they interfere with the normal electrical impulses that travel down the axon. So the big question is what causes the production of all these beta amyloid plaques? It's all controlled by a master switch called amyloid precursor protein. This master switch serves as a sensor for hormones, nutrients, inflammation, and growth factors in our body. Depending on what it senses, the master switch can get broken down a healthy pathway or an inflammatory pathway, which leads to the production of the beta amyloid plaques. It turns out that beta amyloid plaques are actually the brain's defense mechanism against toxic and inflammatory insults. Unfortunately, this leads to a protective downsizing of the brain. In Alzheimer's disease, the brain undergoes atrophy, which means shrinkage, as you can see, there's a big difference between a normal brain, which is shown on the left side, compared to the brain of someone with Alzheimer's disease, which is shown on the right side. These changes can be seen on an MRI of the brain. The hippocampus is the part of the brain where a lot of our memories are formed. And in Alzheimer's disease, we can see atrophy of the hippocampus. We call this hippocampal atrophy. As the disease progresses, we also see atrophy of the cerebral cortex. The health of our brain depends on the balance between synaptoblastic and synaptoclastic changes. 
Synaptoblastic means making new synapses, which is those connections between neurons. The opposite is synaptoclastic, which means destroying synapses. Unfortunately, in Alzheimer's disease, the formation of the beta amyloid plaques tips the balance in favor of synaptoclastic changes, leading to a protective downsizing of the brain. This leads us to the question, what triggers the formation of beta amyloid? It turns out that beta amyloid is actually the brain's protective response toward an inflammatory insult. This could be caused by genetic factors, inflammation in the microbiome, metabolic inflammation, or exposure to toxins from the environment. APOE4 is the strongest known genetic factor for Alzheimer's disease. It's a protein that's produced in the liver and the brain that transports fatty acids and cholesterol. Unfortunately, APOE4 is a risk factor for inflammation, higher cholesterol, cardiovascular disease, as well as Alzheimer's disease. We inherit one copy of APOE from each of our parents. 75% of the U.S. population has two copies of APOE3, which is the normal genotype. A quarter of Americans have one copy of APOE4, which unfortunately increases their risk of Alzheimer's to about 30%. 2% of the American population, or about 7 million Americans, have two copies of APOE4, and unfortunately this increases their risk of Alzheimer's to over 50%. You can find out your APOE genotype by doing a 23andMe. The good news is there's so much you can do to be proactive and to prevent Alzheimer's, which I'm going to cover in this video today. Let's go over all the possible causes of Alzheimer's disease. Inflammation in your body can contribute to inflammation in your brain, which can then cause Alzheimer's disease. Glycotoxicity, which means toxicity from high blood sugar as seen in diabetes, is another cause of Alzheimer's disease. Nutritional deficiencies could also impact your brain, leading to Alzheimer's. As we went over, the APOE4 gene is a genetic risk factor for Alzheimer's. Having inflammation in your gut, also known as leaky gut, can also contribute to Alzheimer's. A mutation in a gene called MTHFR, which controls detox pathways in our cells, could also put you at higher risk of Alzheimer's. Exposure to toxins from the environment is another risk factor. Finally, having a chronic infection anywhere in your body, like your gums, your teeth, your sinuses, or having a chronic infection with Lyme disease, herpes viruses, or fungal overgrowth like Candida, could all contribute to Alzheimer's disease. Now let's take a closer look at inflammation. Unfortunately, the standard American diet has numerous inflammatory triggers, like sugar, high fructose corn syrup, trans fat, and processed foods. Having a damaged or inflamed gut microbiome could be a cause of inflammation. Having insulin resistance is inflammatory. This is when your body's tissues ignore insulin, so your pancreas responds by increasing production of insulin. It's the physiology that can lead to type 2 diabetes. If you have poor dental hygiene, causing gingivitis, periodontis, or an infected root canal, this can cause inflammation. Finally, chronic stress causes high levels of the hormone called cortisol, and this can cause inflammation. Next, let's talk about glycotoxicity. High blood sugar is really toxic to the brain, which is why diabetics have a fourfold increased risk of Alzheimer's. This is why they sometimes refer to Alzheimer's as type 3 diabetes. High blood sugar causes neurons in the brain to produce beta amyloid plaques as a protective defense mechanism. The brain requires certain nutrients to function optimally. If you're deficient in vitamin D3, B12, magnesium, zinc, or omega-3 fatty acids, this could put you at increased risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. A common cause for nutritional deficiencies is eating a diet that's high in processed or fast food. Unfortunately, a lot of non-organic produce is grown on soil that's depleted of nutrients. Finally, many Americans who suffer from heartburn are taking acid-blocking medications called proton pump inhibitors. Unfortunately, these medications interfere with the absorption of B12, vitamin C, magnesium, zinc, and calcium. 
Now let's talk about the gut microbiome. Did you know that the brain and the gut are intricately and bidirectionally connected? We call this the gut-brain axis. In fact, a lot of our brain neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine are actually made in the lining of our gut, which is why we often refer to the gut as the second brain. If the lining of your gut is compromised due to inflammation or leaky gut, this can cause systemic inflammation, which can affect your brain and trigger the production of beta amyloid. I have a whole video dedicated to leaky gut where you can learn the far-reaching effects of gut inflammation, and I'm going to link that below. Many people suffer from a mutation in a gene called MTHFR, which causes them to have slowed detoxification pathways. This gene controls a process called methylation in every cell of your body, and people with a mutation in this gene are more likely to accumulate an inflammatory amino acid called homocysteine, which we can measure on the blood work. High homocysteine is a risk factor for Alzheimer's disease. I have a whole video dedicated to the MTHFR gene, so if you'd like to learn more about it, please check out the link below. Exposure to heavy metals, for example, mercury from tuna or mercury amalgams, copper from piping, lead, cadmium, or arsenic can all impact the brain. Exposure to biotoxins like toxic black mold can also contribute to Alzheimer's. Pollution is another big factor. The cloud that was emitted from the 9-11 tragedy at the World Trade Center was a smorgasbord of toxins. There was jet fuel from the crashed planes, metals from computers, molds and bacteria from buildings, asbestos, glass particles, PCBs from electrical transformers, and dioxins from burning plastics. Unfortunately, within 15 years, 12% of the responders to the 9-11 tragedy had already developed cognitive decline. Dr. Dale Bredesen is a neurologist and pioneer in the field of Alzheimer's research. He developed the RECODE program for reversal of cognitive decline. This protocol is a multifactorial, comprehensive, personalized therapeutic program that involves diet, lifestyle, and targeted supplements. Essentially, it's an integrative or functional medicine approach to reversing cognitive decline. In 2021, he published a paper where he used this protocol on 255 individuals who had mild cognitive impairment or early stage Alzheimer's disease. After 12 months on this protocol, they found significant improvement or stabilization in the individual's cognitive assessments. They also found improvement in their blood metabolic parameters like fasting glucose, high sensitivity CRP, and vitamin D. So how can we prevent Alzheimer's? Early prevention is key, so Dr. Bredesen recommends that everyone get a cognoscopy at the age of 45. This entails a very comprehensive set of labs, an online cognitive assessment, and then an MRI of the brain only if there are symptoms. The comprehensive labs that are recommended as part of the cognoscopy are very similar to the labs I typically order for all of my patients in my integrative medicine practice. Addressing the blood glucose is really important, so you want to check your fasting glucose, your hemoglobin A1c, and your fasting insulin. Inflammation is important, so we measure this with the high sensitivity CRP, and our goal is to get it under 1. Homocysteine is a marker of methylation pathways in your body. Regardless of your MTHFR genotype, you can lower your homocysteine to a goal of 6 by taking a methyl B complex supplement daily. Vitamin D should be optimized to a goal of 60 to 80. You want to supplement with zinc to get your level to about 100, and you want your zinc to copper ratio to be about 1 to 1. Next, we want to check all your hormones. So this includes a full thyroid panel. DHEA is very important for your brain. It's the anti-aging hormone produced by your adrenal glands, and we want to get this level optimized to 150 to 250. Finally, we want to check the female or male sex hormones. If a woman is still menstruating, we check the estradiol, progesterone, and testosterone on day 21 of the menstrual cycle. For men, we want to check testosterone and estradiol. Now let's talk about the diet. 
What's the best diet to prevent or reverse Alzheimer's disease? A paleo or clean ketogenic diet is recommended because these are the most effective diets at controlling blood sugar and reversing insulin resistance. Now to learn more about the clean keto diet, I have a whole video dedicated to this and I'll share the link below. So these are the goals of the diet in preventing Alzheimer's disease. First, you want to normalize your blood sugar and reverse insulin resistance. The reason ketosis is helpful is one of the ketones known as beta-hydroxybutyrate reduces inflammation in neurons, so it has neuroprotective properties and can improve cognitive function. The diet should include plenty of fiber to maintain a healthy gut microbiome. It should also be rich in antioxidants by including a lot of colorful vegetables and berries. If you'd like to learn more about how to reverse insulin resistance, I have a whole video on this which I'll link below. Let's go over more details on what you want to include and avoid in your diet. Make sure your diet is plant rich by including a lot of vegetables. Monounsaturated fats like olive oil, avocados, nuts and seeds are good for the brain. Pasture-raised eggs are a great source of choline, which is found in the yolks, and this can help your brain make more acetylcholine, which is that important brain neurotransmitter. Eating more wild fish like salmon is a great way to get omega-3 fatty acids. Make sure that your chicken and meats are organic or grass-fed. Did you know that coffee improves cognitive function? And you can pair it with MCT oil, which helps your liver generate ketones, which is also brain fuel. Cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, and kale are superfoods because they have compounds that promote detox pathways in the body. Now let's go over the foods that you want to avoid. Sugar is inflammatory on the brain, so you want to minimize your intake of refined sugar. Alcohol should be avoided for a number of reasons. First, it crosses the blood-brain barrier and is a neurotoxin. It also interferes with your absorption of vitamin B1, which is thiamine. It can turn into sugar and increase insulin production. And finally, it can affect your sleep quality. You also want to minimize your intake of processed foods and trans fat, which is found in deep-fried foods. Grains, especially gluten, which is found in breads, pastas, and cereals, are inflammatory on the brain because of their impact on blood glucose and insulin. Finally, dairy products like cheese can also be an inflammatory trigger for many people. Just like carcinogens can cause cancer, dementogens can cause dementia. Unfortunately, the standard American diet is high in dementogens, which includes sugar, refined carbohydrates, soda, and processed foods. Intermittent fasting is wonderful for the brain because it activates autophagy, which is the process of cleaning up all the garbage inside your cells, and this helps reduce inflammation in the brain. It's good to do a minimum of 12 hours between dinner and breakfast, and if you're APOE4 positive, then you want to strive for a longer fasting window of about 14 to 16 hours per day. To learn more about the health benefits of autophagy, please check out my video, which I'll link below. Now let's talk about hormones. When women go through menopause, there's a sudden drop in their hormone levels. And unfortunately, this is thought to be the reason why women have a higher incidence of Alzheimer's compared to men. It turns out the brain likes estradiol, which is estrogen. The good news is bioidentical hormone replacement can be used to optimize hormone levels in both women and men and this can help preserve cognitive function and prevent Alzheimer's disease. If you'd like to learn more about the benefits of bioidentical hormone replacement in menopause, please check out my video, which I'll link below. Staying active and exercising regularly is one of the most important things you can do to protect your brain from cognitive decline. Exercise stimulates the production of new brain cells. Plus, it helps with insulin resistance, it improves your mood, it helps with stress and anxiety, and it improves your sleep quality. Getting quality sleep and having a healthy circadian rhythm is so important to optimal brain function. As we sleep, our brain focuses on cleaning up the garbage, such as beta amyloid, through the glymphatic system. Quality sleep helps our brain to consolidate memories. Stress management is also very important because if you're under chronic stress, your cortisol goes up and this can affect your brain. Now let's go over some essential supplements that can help your brain. 
Methyl B complex is great for brain focus and it promotes methylation which helps to lower your homocysteine. Omega-3 fish oil has essential fatty acids for the brain. I recommend at least one capsule a day and if you're APOE4 positive or noticing any cognitive symptoms, you can increase it to up to three capsules a day. Vitamin D3 with K2 is also essential and you want to get your vitamin D level optimized to 60 to 80 on your blood work. You want to supplement with zinc to get your blood level to around 100. Finally, taking magnesium at bedtime can help with deep sleep and also help to keep your bowels regular. Here are some additional supplements that may also be helpful. Turmeric Pro has anti-inflammatory properties and glutathione is the master antioxidant and detoxifier for all the cells in your body. CoQ10 is an antioxidant that's good for the mitochondria in your cells and the neurons in your brain. If you have insulin resistance, I recommend Berberine Pro and Cinnamon and Chromium because these help to activate your insulin receptors. Addressing your gut microbiome is also important for your brain. So here are some gut healing supplements. Digestive Enzyme Pro helps you to digest your food better so that you can absorb more nutrients. Probiotic 100 billion and 225 billion are high quality probiotics that can strengthen the good bacteria in your microbiome. L-glutamine is an amino acid powder that can help heal inflammation in the gut lining. Prebiotic fiber has resistant starches that can help to keep you full and feed all the good bacteria in your microbiome. Another way to keep your brain sharp as you get older is to never stop learning. For example, you could learn to play a musical instrument. A study was done on twins and they found that the twin with musical knowledge in older adulthood was 36% less likely to develop dementia. Even listening to music stimulates deep neural connections in your brain. You could also read books or do puzzles to keep your brain active. Social engagement and having a purpose and passion later in life can help to keep your brain sharp and help you to live a longer and healthier life. The great news is you can prevent Alzheimer's disease by being proactive with your diet and lifestyle. Our patient here followed this program and saw significant improvement in his memory and cognitive abilities. As you can see, his son and daughter were ecstatic to get their dad back. In summary, these are the key points. The cause of Alzheimer's disease is multifactorial, meaning it's a combination of genetics, diet, and the environment. In Alzheimer's disease, inflammation triggers the production of beta amyloid, which leads to a protective downsizing of the brain. Early prevention is key, so it's important to be proactive about your health. The main goal with the diet is to reverse any insulin resistance. Optimizing key vitamins and healing your gut microbiome can have a positive impact on your brain. Finally, lifestyle factors like exercise, sleep, and stress management can all have a huge impact in preventing Alzheimer's disease. Thanks so much for watching my video all about Alzheimer's disease. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Please share it with your friends and family. I'd love to hear all your questions and comments, so please post those below and I'll get back to you. Thank you again and have a wonderful day.